Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jesse, and today I'm going to be going over Microsoft. All right, we're going to jump right into the financials today. So let's get Microsoft in there. We're going to graph out 10 years and wait for all this to populate. And let's go over to the income statement. We can see for Microsoft over the last 10 years, kind of stagnated between uh, 2013 and 2015, 2016. And then they started increasing revenues uh, drastically over the last like five years or so. Um, see this with a lot of tech companies uh, that kind of went into a monthly recurring revenue based model with uh, software as a service. We're just going to go through the financials real quick and then we'll jump over to the valuation. All right. So we see EPS diluted has grown steadily. They've been buying back a little bit of shares here and there. We go over to the balance sheet and we can see that they have a significant amount of cash on the balance sheet compared to their um, total current liabilities. Cash is actually greater than their total current liabilities. Total current assets is significantly above uh, total current liabilities. So they're looking pretty good there. See growth over the last 10 years with the business. Goodwill and intangible assets has grown, but nothing too drastic compared to the size of the company. Total liabilities and total equity has seen steady increases. Stockholders equity has seen steady increase over, over the last 10 years as well. Go to free cash flow. More of the same, we got a uh, increasing operating cash flow, increasing free cash flow, and then we can see kind of net change in cash. We get to where they've been doing with that cash and they've been doing some debt repayment. They've been doing a decent, a large amount of it is going to common stock repurchases, um, which is interesting because they're not purchasing like on a percentage basis. So I think it's about 0.9 to 1% of buybacks per year. So, um, and then we've got a little bit of dividends paid as well. So they're kind of splitting out their return to capital to shareholders via dividends and uh, stock repurchases. All right, so here we can see the margins over the last 10 years. Um, kind of saw a decrease in margins for a little bit. And then we've kind of had margin expansion over the last five years, kind of going along with that software as a service recurring revenue type model for a lot of their products, as well as the establishment of Microsoft Azure um and growing that segment of the business per share metrics we can see nice growth over net income per share operating cash flow per share and free cash flow per share so solid there all right valuation metrics we can see that they've had multiple expansion fairly steadily over the last 10 years with these valuation metrics increasing yield metrics decreasing kind of inversely correlated right so if one goes up the other is going to go down um historic historic dividend payouts it's been steadily increasing. I think they pay about a 1% dividend right now. Um, and they've had about an average of 10% dividend payout growth per year. Mark cap and enterprise value have been staying somewhat in line. So <clears throat> no type of large amounts of outstanding debt or cash changes. And then if we go into the growth percentages, we can see revenue and gross growth um, has been steady between 10 to 20% over the last four or five years. Dilution buybacks a year, we can see we're at around 0.8%, 0.9%. Nine, so right around 1% per year. And then we have fully diluted EPS growth on a percentage basis. So sometimes you have these one-offs. Dividend share growth is right around 10%, 10%, 10%, 9.14%. So right around 9 to 10% or 7 to 10% over the last five years. Uh, analyst estimates projecting out just a little bit of growth over this next um, year. Um, securities transacted for insiders had some sales, decent amount of awards, nothing super crazy. Um, so with that being said, let's jump over to the evaluation. Here we have the evaluation. We kind of see the bottom line growth over the last five years has been 22.53%. If we look at the um, the multiples that I, I care about the most, which is the bottom line yields, we can kind of see, and these, these are all in the, uh, a yearly graph instead of a quarterly. Uh, previous was quarterly graph. So we can see the bottom line yields, which is another like version of tracking a multiple. They start off pretty high here around seven to ten percent and then moderated down um, and it kind of stagnated around here between 2.5 to probably four percent over the last oh seven years or so. So their multiples historically have uh, kind of been fairly close to the uh, ten-year treasury rate. Um, probably a little bit of a spread maybe in one uh, 
one percent spread or something like that you can kind of see that average here over the last five years the ebit yield spread has been 1.86 uh, 0.98 for the net yield spread and free cash flow yield spread is 1.24 for average uh, bond line yield spread of 1.36 uh, compared to the 10-year treasury. So my assumptions are I want a 15% um, base KGAR, compound annual growth rate of 15%. I'm giving myself a 2.5% margin of safety, which is a target rate of 17.5%. Add in the dividend yield of 1% on that. Maybe I should lower that a little bit. I could, but I'm going to leave it there for now. And then over the valuation assumptions, we've got the 10-year treasury. Currently, the 10-year treasury is sitting around about 3.45%. Uh, uh, which is right in between this bearish and base case. But um, for a very bearish, I've got the 10-year treasury at 4.87, going to 1.99 in the very bullish scenario. Dilution, I'm going to say that they're going to be buying back anywhere from 0.53% uh, to 1.66% on a yearly basis across the scenarios. Bottom line growth, my, my base is right around 15%, but I have my spread from the very bullish side of 22% to the very bearish side of 10%. I think most likely we're gonna fall in this bearish to base case of 12.42 to 15.15 over the next like five years. The EBIT yield spread is going from 2.72 in the very bearish scenario to 1.86 in the very bullish scenario. The net yield spread 1.43 to 0.98 and the free cash flow yield spread of 1.81 to 1.42. So we can see in the very bearish scenario, it would be yielding 6.85% on the bottom line. That's only really going to probably happen if we have the risk-free rate increase pretty drastically to this 4.87 uh, amount, right? So that's a fairly large jump. Um, and then very bullish, we have 3.35%. Um, so we have a much higher multiple there. And that's mostly going to be dictated by the risk-free rate that we're seeing. Um, I'm expecting most likely the risk-free rate to kind of land between this, um, probably in this bearish scenario, base case to bearish. I mean, right now it's at 3.45, so it's right in between them. It could go up to the very bearish amount, but I kind of have a feeling that if it went up to the very bearish amount, the companies that are have really strong moats and really stable revenue might have more of a premium as far as the spread, so the spread might not increase enough. So. Um, with that being said, we can kind of see the yields historically have been under 5%. So if we get an opportunity to where the yields are above 5%, um, it's probably looking like a, a decent um, value um, just from a yield base, not taking into account the risk-free rate. So really that'd be anywhere between this bearish and base case. So with all of these assumptions, we can see that the price targets over the next five years from the very bearish scenario is 239, the bearish scenario is 321, the base case is 439, the bullish case is 615, and the very bullish case is 885. So in order to get my target 17.5% return with my built-in, which is 15% plus my built-in margin of safety, I'm really gonna have to see a uh, very bearish price um, the buy point would be 106, the bearish price buy point would be 143, the base case buy price would be 196, the bullish buy price would be 274, and the very bullish uh, buy price would be 394, which we can see that would have to probably get us somewhere down to around um, that pre-COVID highs or so um, in order to get the base case. So we're sitting at 244 right now, base case is at 196. And then my weightings, starter position at the base case, uh, load up heavier at the bearish case, and then keep some capital available for the very bearish case. So um, that's it for Microsoft. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.